today's video, we're showing you how to replace a thermostat in a 2010 Toyota Corolla, which this will be similar to other models that happen to have this Toyota 1.8 liter engine as well. Now these are some of the items that we'll need for today's project, like a pair of gloves, and then also this 10 millimeter deep socket with the small extension on a quarter inch drive, also a few of these pliers to help get some of the clamps off, and then also your parts, which is gonna be the thermostat, and also the new O-ring seal as well, along with some more radiator fluid, and also a couple of catch cans or some kind of gallon jugs to catch the old radiator fluid. We're also going to replace this intermediate pipe as well because these are simple to replace and only cost about $30 because these can start leaking and become brittle and crack. And with the Toyota Corolla being so low, it's not a bad idea to actually put it on some ramps that we can get underneath the vehicle a lot easier. The first thing we need to do is get the old radiator fluid out and you want to make sure your vehicle is either lukewarm or cold when doing this because we need to get this fluid out and it can be hot and there's the little drain valve right down there. It's either going to be orange or yellow like this one is shown and so we need to hook up like something like a tube from underneath the vehicle and as you can see right here I'll get a better shot. There it is again. Now you can get to this actually from the top. And again, if we hook up a tube such as this, I actually had to get one a little bit bigger and put it onto the bottom of the valve. That way I can just put this into the gallon jug and this will make draining it a lot easier and also help in not making a mess. And now what we need to do is open up that valve, which you can get to it from underneath if you remove these little push pins, but these tend to get brittle, they'll break, and then you have to replace them. So if you actually go up top, you can take your left arm and just work your way down and then you can open that valve a couple turns enough to get the fluid flowing. If you open it up all the way, it'll come out, splash and make a big mess everywhere. And now you can see it's flowing great. So now we're gonna do that intermediate pipe first, but we have to remove the battery. We're gonna go ahead and remove the negative side of the battery terminal first. And you can see it's already loose, but this is because when I loosened it up prior, the video actually wasn't recording. So go ahead and remove that and set that down to the side. We'll go ahead and take the 10 millimeter again and remove the positive side as well and just set that off to the side. Now we have to remove the bracket. And again, this is 10 millimeters, which this whole job requires this 10 millimeter socket for the most part and those pair of pliers. Go ahead and remove the bracket. And now this has a little hook that likes to catch on everything, but I will show you where this goes at the end of the video. That way you have it in the correct position because it is kind of down there and you want to make sure you get it installed properly. So make sure you stick around towards the end of the video to see where that goes. Remove your battery. We'll also remove this engine cowling because this will give us a little bit of extra room for later. And now we can go ahead and start working on that mid pipe. We're going to remove the battery tray and just go ahead and set this off to the side. We need to get to these two 10 millimeter bolts. I'm going to use some power, go ahead and take both of these out and take your time so you don't drop the bolts or this will just make the job longer. Go ahead and pull these out and set these to the side now that this is loose. Now we're going to remove the first hose clamp on the little hose. Go ahead and just slide it back onto the hose. Now we can remove this hose and we'll set this off to the side as well. Now we're going to go after one of the bigger hose clamps with the same pair of angled pliers and you can use a different set. It just matters to which one works best for you. Set that one off to the side. Same thing with this hose bracket as well. Now we can go ahead and start disconnecting the hoses from that mid pipe. Now you gotta be careful because sometimes these will pop off real quick and you can kind of bust your hands while working in here. So go ahead and remove the one. Now I'm just gonna give this a little bit of a twist and sometimes these do get stuck. So just take your time, try to work it off. You may have to get a small screwdriver in there just to break the seal, but this one happened to just pop off right at the end. And now that we've got this removed, we'll go ahead and take a quick inspection just to see if there is any cracks, or maybe it could have just been the hose leaking as well. Go ahead and reinstall the new mid pipe. And now I'm gonna bolt this down first, that way it'll be held in place. And that way I can put the hoses on in the correct position. Tighten down with your 10 millimeter wrench, and you don't have to torque these down super tight, just get them nice and snug. Now while this is in position, you wanna make sure you support the pipe while you're putting on the hoses. So go ahead and get one hose on and now with one hand support that plastic pipe. That way you don't tend to tweak or break that bracket that it sits on. Go ahead and reinstall the next pipe and again apply a little pressure on the backside just to make sure you're supporting it. And now we can also inspect our hoses as well because this is a good idea in case you want to replace these. If you have maybe 150 or 200,000 miles it wouldn't be a bad idea or at least take a visual inspection. 
Now with this particular hose being that it fits loosely over that last little nipple, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut off about a half an inch. That way I get a snug fit with this hose using a razor blade. And now when I push this on, there's actually some resistance and it feels like it grabs a lot better than it did before. Go ahead and slide all three of the hose clamps back on into their original position, making sure you don't go past and leaving a little bit of hose past the clamp. And now we can pretty much call this job done. Now onto the main job, which is doing the thermostat. Now you can see it is kind of down there underneath the alternator, but it's not really that bad. This wire is kind of in the way, so what we're going to do is unplug this alternator plug, and this is going to help give us just a little extra room to work, and that way we also don't take a chance of busting it off. Press that little white tab, wiggle it loose, and go ahead and pull it out towards you. And go ahead and move that to the side. And if the radiator cap is off, put a rag or something over the hole, that way nothing happens to accidentally fall in. And now for that hose clamp. So I'm gonna be using an extra long set of kind of pliers. These are kind of special and a little bit harder to get, but I will have links in the description of other tools that might make this job a little bit easier. So I'm gonna be doing this kind of one-handed to try to get this hose clamp off. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and slide it like we did the other ones. And we'll see how well this kind of goes while I'm holding the camera. And so far so good. Now I can kind of just wiggle this down and we'll go ahead and set it to the side. But before you pull the hose off, put a little container down to catch some of the fluid. Because right now, as we give this a little twist and then also pull up on it, we are going to lose a little radiator fluid, as you can see there. Let that drain. Now we can go ahead and set this hose off to the side as well. And also give this one a good inspection as well. If it looks like there's any bulging or thin spots, go ahead and replace it. Now you can see our thermostat housing and there's two 10 millimeter nuts on there we have to take off. So go ahead and break off the first one, get it loose. Then we'll work our way onto that second one. And if you get these loose enough, you should be able to take these off by hand. The second one, you have to go under that AC compressor line. Now that we've gotten this one loose, which this is the hardest one to get to, but just take your time and don't drop your tools because that'll just make the job longer. Now that we've got these loose, we can actually start spinning these off by hand. And then once you get close, make sure you grab them with your fingers so you don't drop them down into the abyss. There's one. Now we'll go after that last 10 millimeter nut. That way we can get that thermostat housing off and get this job just about completed. Now there are a couple things I do want to show you later, so make sure you stick around for that because there are a couple important checks, but when you pull this off, don't tweak it, you can crack it. And now there's our thermostat. So now that looks like the original one that's been in the vehicle since it was new. Now sometimes these will pull out, but that seal right there can hold them in place pretty good, so you might need a little hook or a screwdriver or something to pry it out. I can't get this one out, so I'm gonna end up getting a little hook tool real quick. Now that I got this tool, I should have grabbed a bigger one, but since I'm here, we'll give it a good pull and a mess we make. So we lose a little bit of fluid and also our thermostat is down there, but we'll clean up and get the other part back installed. So here is our original thermostat. We're gonna go ahead and take off the seal real quick, this little O-ring. And we'll set this to the side and now you want to make sure you confirm that the part is correct so we'll get the new thermostat and even though they look a little bit different as long as the size is correct and the length is correct you also want to make sure the temperature is correct as well because one will say celsius and the other one will actually say like 180 degrees which is inside there which this is a correct part for your car and even though they look different it'll still work because these are not new these have been around for decades and i'll have links in the description for these parts as well now, if you don't know how these work, these are actually really simple. That little plunger just basically goes down. And as that spring gets hotter and hotter, it'll just open up the little valve. I'll show you real quick with a heat gun. I'll speed up the video. And if you take a look at the top of it where I'm holding the pliers, you'll see the black plunger kind of coming down. Well, now the valve is actually opening as heat is applied. And now this is what's going to let the fluid flow through the engine block to help keep it cool and back up to the radiator. Now we need to get the new thermostat ready by installing the o-ring. Look for the little slit that's in the middle of the o-ring and we're going to go ahead and install that onto the thermostat. You just basically have to hold it into place real quick and then work your way around to get it installed. And now this unit is ready to be installed back into the car. Also a good time to inspect your thermostat housing to make sure there are no cracks where the hose seats onto it and also where the bolts go through it because sometimes if you pull up and tweak this it can crack the edges and then it'll start leaking and you'll have to start all over. Back into the car, make sure that the surface area is clean before you do install the new thermostat, but if it's already ready to go, go ahead and install this new one and just get it into place. And then you can go ahead and seat it all the way around with your finger to make sure it's nice and snug. 
and then we'll go ahead and get the thermostat housing and we'll put that back into place. Go ahead and grab the thermostat housing and now we can install that. Install the two 10 millimeter nuts and be careful not to drop these. You should be able to put these almost all the way down hand tight. Now just snug the top one and we'll tighten the other one first. So down here, since this one's a little harder to get to, we'll pretty much tighten this one all the way. And then we'll come back up to the top one and we'll finish tightening this all the way as well. Now we can go ahead and reinstall our radiator hose. And now when installing this, make sure you get the hose all the way up to the seat where that little stop is right there. If it is, then you can go ahead and get your hose clamp and then put that back into place. Now make sure when you put this on, you don't overshoot it like I did here. You want to make sure you slide it back to where there's about a quarter inch of a little bit of hose that's beyond the hose clamp itself. Reinstall the alternator plug. And also don't forget to tighten up the drain screw. That way all the new fluid doesn't go out. Now we got to do the battery real quick and put on this new bracket. Now this hose just goes into a little slot down there and if you have the battery out, look before you put it back in. This little bar will just go right in there and hook on. Now just hold a little pressure while you hold the bracket in place. That way you can get the 10 millimeter bolt that goes onto the front part of the frame and then tighten it down. And I'll go ahead and tighten down the other one and make sure the battery doesn't move. Reinstall your positive cable first with a 10 millimeter. Then we'll go ahead and install our little red protective cap and then we'll move on to the negative cable and do the same thing. And now we'll go ahead and put the engine cowling back on and we're just about complete with this. But all you have to do is line up that oil cap, go ahead and press down and that's pretty much all there is to this. And now a couple more very important steps that I want to show you before you just get done and go. We need to add our new radiator fluid and while doing this, this can be a little bit tricky depending on the funnel you use, but just leave a little bit of an air gap down there. And also while you're filling this, you may have to stop once in a while and kind of burp the hoses by squeezing them. This will help kind of get some of the air out of the system and also make some of the fluid go down a little bit quicker by pressing both sides of the hoses. Also making sure your reservoir is almost all the way full and check it after you're done driving. Now one more very important step. After you get the engine fired up, make sure you inspect the whole engine area where you were working on your vehicle. Anywhere you touched anything, make sure you look and inspect for no leaks. Make sure everything is correct. And then after this part, there's one more very important step to do as well, which is basically taking it for a test drive to make sure everything works. And I hope you liked the video. Smash the like button and subscribe.